okay in this video we'll talk about how to install splunk universal forwarder in linux okay so we'll be mainly using uh, google cloud platform for uh, for the environment and over there we'll try to install splunk universal forwarder there okay so before we start we'll first procure a google cloud instance i will show you how to do that then we will install universal forwarder over there okay so to procure a google cloud instance first you need to go to search google cloud over here so there is a website called cloud.google.com okay so over there first thing is you need to have an account over there so you can access with your gmail id only so i have already logged in over there okay now from this page you need to go to console you can go to console from here as well okay so if i just go to console over there now when you set up google cloud first time google basically gives a 300 dollar free credit okay i think that is enough credit for do for doing some kind of poc okay and that credit will be available for i think uh, one year now before we create an instance okay we need to have a project first so if you see it here here i clicked on select a project right so currently i do not have any project over here so i'll be clicking on a new project so it will take me to the new project window right now i was using some of the uh, cloud instances before so that's why if you see um, it, it was giving me this kind of errors but you may not see this kind of informations over there okay now the project name will say let's say splunk underscore admin i'll create this project okay now location is fine i'll be clicking on create the name has been invalid character okay so i cannot give over here so i'll say splunk admin okay so my project has been created now so it is basically creating that particular project now it, it generally takes a uh, few seconds to create that project okay so project has been created so this is our project over here now if you see it over here it is it is showing me this kind of information like what is the amount left credit left till now and how many days till now okay based on your usage you may find this kind of information different from your system okay now we have created a project now we have to create an instance right to do that we will click on this breadcrumb icon okay now we will be going to now one thing you need to make sure that before even creating the project is you need to have a billing account over there you can you can only start this 300 dollar credit only when if you set up a billing billing account over there over there you may need to give uh, your credit card information but google said like they 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 are not going to charge anything under unless you convert this to a paid account okay so even i am i am using this particular account for last one year i think uh, nothing has been charged over there so in that way i think this this is this is cool okay so now so let's go to so we'll be creating a new instance right so for that we need to come to this compute menu option go to compute engine and go to vm instances okay now let, let's give it some time to make it ready okay so now this is google is a basically it was installing some kind of compute engine for my my project so now i can create a vm instance over there okay so i'll be clicking on that we create vm instance now i'll be giving this name as let's say splunk forwarder forwarder okay forwarder one let's say i'll be giving this one now region you can choose any region based on based on this region and the zone this this particular credit will be changing so i have seen like this uh, us east is the uh, m uh, most cheaper one even i think from nearby my country 
let's select Mumbai over here you can you can try different combination and, and see what what is the charge showing up over here based on that you can you can select them uh, one as we are doing some kind of POC so um, we, we can choose a instance which is less uh, robust and less chargeable as well okay so I'll just select Asia South one Mumbai okay and I'll zone I'll be selecting C only now for as we are installing forwarder over here right so we may not we do not need very high high power cpu so i think one virtual cpu is fine and 3.75 gb memory is fine now here over here we will be selecting the operating system right so we will be choosing ubuntu 118.10 this one okay and memory size will be will be selecting 10 gb only okay i will be clicking on select now after that rest of the stuff like service account the compute engine default service account i will be keeping as is is okay and access points allow default access we will be keeping uh, this one only okay now here in the firewall we will be clicking on this one allow http traffic okay now we'll be clicking on create so it may take some time to create an instance over here if you see currently it is running a script to create an instance so we'll wait for that instance creation okay so now our instance has been created if you see it has assigned two things over here internal ip and external ip over here now whenever you are shutting down this particular instance right this external ip will be always changing okay but internal ip will be same now we have created a google cloud instance now we will be installing Splunk universal forwarder over there okay so before we install over there let me show you how you can access this instance through command prompt okay the most easiest way to access this is clicking on clicking on this ssh button okay so it, it, it basically opens a web version of the command prompt uh, or, or the terminal basically which by which you can access this particular instance okay so let us wait to do that and in in parallel we'll do another thing okay let it let it open in parallel we will first download splunk universal forwarder for ubuntu right okay so we'll just say download splunk universal forwarder for ubuntu so it will take us to the splunk download page okay so now from here if you see we have lot of operating system level splunk packages we'll be clicking on this linux okay and then we'll be clicking on this dot deb package we'll be downloading this package now here i'll show you how we can directly download to this particular google cloud instance itself okay so to do that what we'll do first we'll click on this download now for dot deb package we'll click on this download now okay so it will try to start the download okay we'll cancel it okay now if you see it over here it is it is giving me another option called command line wget we'll be clicking on this one so there is a wget link you will get it over here we'll copy this okay now we have already logged into our instance right so over here we will be pasting this wget link okay and clicking on and press enter over there so it basically download directly downloads from splunk to our google cloud instances over here okay so if i just give give ls here so if you see this is the dot dv package it downloaded from splunk right now we need to install it so before we install it we need to log in as a sudo so we'll give sudo su as a super user okay so that's why I'm, I'm logged in as a root now if you see it over here right so now we will be installing it now the installation command is d p k g okay minus i then the package name okay i'll paste it over here so basically now we using this particular command it is installing the splunk okay now it the splunk installation already completed 
So if I just go to CD, it's basically installed in slash opt slash splunk forwarder. Okay, because this is a forwarder package. So that means it will be creating this folder structure slash opt slash splunk forwarder. Okay, so I'll click on enter. Let's say ls. So inside the bin, if we just go inside the bin folder, so splunk normal splunk version and the forwarder version the main difference is now normal splunk home will be slash opt slash splunk for splunk forwarder the splunk home will be slash opt slash splunk forwarder okay now we went inside the bin folder because for linux environment splunk will not start automatically so we have to start splunk by our own okay there is a way um, we can set up like whenever this particular instance is again open or if we shut down and if we just restart this instance Splunk will be automatically restarted okay there is an way I will show you that one in next video when we will be installing a full-fledged Splunk in, in Ubuntu as well okay so here what I will do is inside the bin folder we will run this command dot slash Splunk start okay so this will basically start the splunk here it will give you the license agreements so you have to accept it okay so if you see do you agree with this license i will give yes okay now here you have to create an admin username and password the ad username i will be giving is admin the password i will set some password here okay you can set your own password accordingly okay okay so after setting up the password it's basically restarted the splunk so our forwarder installation is done so next video we'll see how to install this full stack splunk in ubuntu which will act as a receiver okay then we'll see how to configure this forwarder and the splunk receiver to for the for the data forwarding purpose okay so we'll see in next video